My karaoke song would be 1985 by Bowling for Soup. I could maybe say, I was worried you were gonna grab your phone and make me start singing it. Like, sure. The Mighty Pseudomorphine Power Gems. You know who's really mighty? Elizabeth. Here I come to save the day. Because I know she knows so much about pseudomorphs, and pseudomorphs are probably more in the realm of geology. Elizabeth, what is a pseudomorph? Okay, so a pseudomorph literally just means false form. So what you're looking at is all of these minerals, something about them is not quite what they appear. Mm -hmm. Pick one and what do you want to start with? Uh, let's just start with this one. Okay, Aquamarine. so no. So this is a three-part pseudomorph. So what you're looking at is the crystalline structure that you see, so these outlines, is actually scapolite. So what it is, is what you're looking at is the colorless here. So right, you can I see, see it has like a core. So what this is, is this is an alteration of the original scapolite crystals. So if I was to break this whole thing open, you would see the same core. And so the middle of it is scapolite. Then the outside of it is a mixture of two different minerals that really don't normally get along to, with each other. Mm -hmm. So you have something called orthoclase, okay. which is a type of feldspar, and it's very potassium rich. And then you have another mineral that is in a family called feldspathoids, which means feldspar-like. Mm -hmm. And it is lazurite. So if you know lapis lazuli, mm -hmm. so this is a relative to lapis lazuli. Oh, how cool on a molecular level, we have a mixture of those two different minerals as the as this alteration crust oh, on cool. the scapolite. So two, a couple different ways that this could happen. You could have a partial alteration of the scapolite into the orthoclase, which is that feldspar, and then you have the lazulite come in later, but because they are so molecularly intertwined, I really couldn't tell you which came first. It's so, chicken or the egg. really, it's like a chicken or egg thing. So, this is another pseudomorph. That is another pseudomorph. Prenite, right? Yeah. So, that is prenite. So tell me, this is honestly probably my favorite specimen that we own. Did you know that? Um, so, this is what's called an epimorph. What I call an epimorph is a pseudomorph of a mineral. Okay that is encrusted and then the original mineral that was encrusted actually dissolves away, leaving a cast. What was the original here? So the original here was, so if you can see that oh, little see hollow right tube right there. Yeah, so this is actually prenite after lamantite. Wait, lamantite? Lamantite, L-A-U-M-O-N. It's, it's lama not, not lama. No, that would actually be really cool. Uh, ooh, look at me and my bad self. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. To be honest, if anybody wants a good laugh, just start looking up mineral names. Oh, they're There's some wild. really off-the-wall mineral names. But so this is this is an epimorph. And um, now the, what's really similar is something called a perimorph, which is P-E-R-I morph. Mm -hmm. And so what the perimorph is is actually an incrustation pseudomorph without the other mineral being dissolved away. Cool. So sometimes you get stuff like say calcite over top of a fluoride or you get quartz over top of a calcite or there's there's different ways that you can see this you can you can look them up online they're really really neat and no two of them are alike at all and so what you're actually seeing is two different episodes of crystalline formation and growth so that's why these guys are so cool this guy so this is actually a spinel now if you look at that shape it is hexagonal so this is a spinel that actually replaced a corundum crystal. So if you were to test this, oh. it tests as a spinel, but it has the shape of a corundum. Oh, so okay, if you're out in the field, how do you make sure you're actually seeing a pseudomorph? Okay, so there are some different ways. So with a lot of pseudomorphs, a lot of times you're actually missing that crystallinity. So like here, you can see that it's very granular and how it just looks like a whole bunch of grains yeah, stuck together. Beautiful. So with this guy, that's that's one of the kind of ways that you can look at it. If you look at this with a loop, some of these actually do look like little tiny spinel crystals. Oh, cool. What do you think 
this is. It's not complicated. We sell a lot of these Malachite. two minerals. Yeah. So we have a lot of these two minerals in jewelry as well. They occur together quite often. So this is actually malachite with a surficial alteration of azurite crystals. And so what's happening here is that malachite and azurite are extremely closely related. And basically what's happening is with exposure to water and over a long period of time, you actually have malachite replacing that azurite. So if I was to break this open, the core of it would probably still be azurite. Oh, cool. Okay, so tell me about this piece right here because that looks like it's a marshmallow. Okay, so Which that is that is a Edible. paramorph. Okay, tell us what a paramorph is. So a paramorph means that it has the same chemical composition as another mineral, but the molecular structure has been changed. Okay, what? How? Okay, so some minerals can only exist at certain pressures and temperatures. So what happened here is that you actually had a aragonite form at the correct temperature and pressures, and then it was exposed to surficial temperature and pressures. And even though it looks like an aragonite, it's labeled as an aragonite molecularly. It is a calcite. Um, so here we have another pseudomorph, and this is limonite after pyrite. Oh, cool. So as you guys have seen on this channel before, I know we've done a little bit of pyrite somewhere, um, probably in the cubic crystal system. Um, this is basically you have a pyrite growing in a rhyolite or in a clay type, clay type matrix. Well, so here limonite is literally just a rust replacement of those pyrites. So essentially it's a rust, but it usually forms like in clays and things like that, but it is, um, it's an oxidation product of the pyrites. And so here you can see where there was kind of a little pyrite crystal and it's actually hollow inside. So what can happen with pseudomorphs is you can have an, a simultaneous replacement or you can have a void that is then filled. So it really just kind of depends on what's going on. Like geology is weird and it's different everywhere. So you, you can have all these different things going on at the same time. So like I could have a quartz crystal that gets a square shape. I've actually seen some agates that the interior of the agate has a square shape. That's because when it was forming, it started forming inside of a void that was created by another mineral that had a square shape. Mm -hmm. So then you get these banded square agates which is really wild, really crazy. So would you ever see a pseudomorph in a piece of jewelry? Probably. So um, a lot of times you'll have like the azurite malachite. Mm -hmm. So you're actually more likely not looking at a pseudomorph. That's cool. um, I have seen like, again, if you count fossils in this, dinosaur bone. True. Um, is a really, really pretty replacement. I've seen an opalized dinosaur bone before. Yeah, which is really that pretty. Spectacular. Yeah. Okay guys, take a look at the crystal structure here and that beautiful white color. Um, what is one then, fact that we should remember about this? That aragonites aren't always what they appear. I think I love this guy. Hmm. So just take a look at the granular shapes on there and you know, pay close attention to that hexagonal outline. And sometimes if you can get close enough, a lot of these little grains actually start looking like little octahedrons. Oh, that's cool. You know, life's tough when you're rocking out. Anyways, on that note. Get it? Get it? Like rocking out on that note. No one's laughing at me. Alrighty. Oh. Like, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. We've got some really great stuff coming up. You know, I say that line every single week, but it's true every single week. We've got great videos coming up. Yeah. Great content. Yeah. High five.
Um, and hey guys, do us a favor, share your favorite video, whether it's this one or another one, share it on your social media and let your friends know how cool gemology and geology is. And you can see maybe more episodes of gemologists versus geologists. We're gonna duke it out. I think you're more aggressive than us. Stop. <laughs> Um, okay, and leave us a comment. We want to hear what was your favorite fact today from the episode about pseudomorphs. Um, I hope you are more than pseudo happy about what you learned today, and we'll catch you on the flip side. See you guys later. Adios. Bye. Bye.